I am Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Clearly, our show on DCTV 23 that has the purpose of bringing information to you about county departments, programs, and people. Information is essential to being able to think clearly. Welcome to this special episode of Clearly. I am very excited to announce my special guest today. All four are veterans who have served our country and now continue to serve Douglas County in various ways. With me today are Sergeant Major Keisha Jordan, Mr. Ken Bernard, Sergeant Major Mary Lepley, and former National Commander of the American Legion and retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Dale Barnett. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm so excited that it's Veterans Day. Uh, it's approaching us very soon. November is such a wonderful month and I'm so excited. And being a former veteran myself and also a former Marine wife and a daughter of a Korean War paratrooper, this is an honor for me to interview you all today and I'm so excited that everyone accepted. I'll start off today, uh, Just I just have a few questions and I'll start from right to left, and I have a question. Just want to know, what in, um, motivated all of you all to join the Marine Corps? And I'll start with you, Sergeant Major. Um, in a nutshell, ma'am, I needed discipline. Um, rough neighborhood growing up, rough upbringing. Um, I didn't have the discipline that I needed to um, be successful. Uh, it wasn't a matter of never being able to find a job. I could always get a job. It was keeping a job that was my problem. I didn't want anybody to say anything to me. So I, you know, from being a little girl, you know, I always heard Marines was the toughest branch of service. So I, I said, if they couldn't do it, nobody couldn't do it, so. And they did it, right? They did it, And you yes, spent 30 years of 30 years, miss, yes oh, ma'am. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Mr. Bernard, tell me about your experience in the Marine Corps. I know I understand you were a JAG officer. Tell me about that. Well, uh, I think it started as a young child. I, I shared S Sergeant Major's uh, perspective about the Marine Corps, had family members that had served, and I just knew I wanted to be a Marine. And I remember when I was in undergraduate school at uh, the University of Georgia, I tried to get an OCS, but I missed the cutoff. And so I sort of sat on the idea, and when I got to my first year of law school, I said, there's only one time in my life I'm gonna be single with no kids, and able to serve without any restrictions whatsoever. And so I showed up at the recruiter's office. He passed out because their quota, I think, in the Southeast <laughs> region were probably four <laughs> Marine Jags, and I was one of them. Wow. And he couldn't believe I could pass the physical fitness test, and, and it, it went on from there. But uh, as a Jag, I had a great experience. Uh, and part of that experience, and you know, as many people know, Jag officers in the Marine Corps are unrestricted line officers. So I went to infantry school after OCS in Quantico, Virginia. Then I spent uh, some time in Newport, Rhode Island at Naval Justice School. And when I hit the fleet, Marine Force, uh, I went out to uh, Camp Pendleton. Yes. And I had served in a variety of billets at Camp Pendleton. Uh, as I, they say a lot, the reason why the conviction rate is so high in the Marine Corps, when you're new, you're a defense counsel. When you get seasoned, you become a prosecutor. So I served in both capacities and uh, ended my tour as a human resource officer for the first FSSG, which was my uh, probably the crowning point of my career because as the Sergeant Major knows, when you have troops, there's nothing like your troops. That's right. Wow. That's right. Simple Fidelis. Yes, ma'am. All oh, right. Uh, Sergeant Major Lepley, I have a question. You have traveled all overseas and served in various places, but you call Douglas County Home. Tell me a little bit about your military experience, and I can reflect back a little bit. You were the first uh, set of women uh, in Fort Jackson. When, Tell when me a little bit about that. When I first entered, um, it was back in 74. At that point, the Women's Army Corps was still in existence, mm -hmm. and all the women were trained at McClellan, but they were doing the, I, there was a name for it, and I can't remember. Anyway, they were trying to build up troops, the Vietnam era. and. They, were, they had yes. targeted women to bring women in, and so they opened up Fort Jackson, 
and I was part of the, the first group that went through to get trained at Fort Jackson as, as a woman. Now, it was completely all females. Uh, and it was rather interesting because we had makeup classes, which <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely amazed by. And, uh, oh, they arranged a dance between us and a, and a male group. Mm -hmm. uh, another, again, stuff that we would never, ever do today. <laughs> but um, didn't have uniforms, not really. Uh, they kind of haphazard at it. But, uh, oh, and when it came to weapon training, at that time women were not required to either qualify or carry a weapon. Wow. And so I can remember the drill sergeant saying, anybody kind of want to go to the room? <laughs> and a whole bunch of us, yes, yes, because they didn't want to take us out there. Uh -huh. But um, it, it was a great time, and I, got, I made friends, and I still have a lot of those friends. Wow. And why did you go into the military? Any particular reason why you joined? I can know? echo everything she said. I was <laughs> making a lot of bad decisions. Okay. And um, I haven't grown up in the military. My father was a career officer. Um, I knew that I could get discipline. And I'm so thankful that I came in when I came in and I had the NCOs over me at that time. Because in all honesty, as I matured and gained responsibility in the military, had I been me as a private and come to me as a supervisor, <laughs> I wouldn't have lasted at all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but they, they saw something and they, they kept working with me and right. 26 years later as a command sergeant major in charge of a battalion, I think I did okay. You did more than okay. Yes. Thank you so much for all y'all's service. I move to you next, Lieutenant Commander uh, Barnett. Tell me why you joined the military. Well, it's kind of a unique experience because mine goes full circle. I went to American Legion Voice State in my junior year we were introduced to a variety of government uh, uh, problems and issues and, and military people who came to speak to us. It was during the time of the Vietnam War. And uh, it came time that uh, I thought I was going to go to uh, college and play basketball or something like that. And I wasn't that good of a basketball player. <laughs> and wow. so uh, I had a counselor came back from West Point and she said, you need to apply. I think she had seen me play basketball. And uh, so I applied and uh, I was accepted and uh, ended up graduating from the military academy and then pursuing a 22-year career in the, in, the, in the Army. And what an experience it is to serve your nation because you learn that uh, you can make a difference. And it doesn't matter if you're black, you're white, you're male, you're female, uh, you're Hispanic. If you're a veteran, you have one thing in mind, and that's to help each other to serve your country and to make a country better. And uh, I kind of like that, and I still do, and I still uh, involved with youth programs in the American Legion, and Boys State, and Boys Nation, and, and helping to carry on those lessons to the next generation because they're our future. Wow, that's, that's a great response, and thank you so much for your service as well. Uh, Sergeant Major, um, Jordan, tell me a little bit. You're from New Jersey, I believe. Is that where you're yes, from originally? Yes, ma'am. Jersey City, New Jersey. Oh, okay, yes, on that East Coast side of the world. <laughs> so, um, how long have you worked at Chapel Hill? I believe you're at Chapel Hill now. You are yes, over the R ROTC program? NJROTC, Navy Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've been there about two years now. Um, I started working there while I was on terminal leave. I hadn't retired yet. Did, didn't want to retire. So, I wanted to do more stuff, um, just anything that had to do with the military. And um, I ended up at Chapel Hill as just going to use them as a, uh, a practice run for my other, <laughs> other interviews that I had lined up with Marine Corps JRTC. And it was, it was just like, it was instant, um, talking with them and they're t talking to me. And, and when they called me, it was, I, I couldn't say no, you know. It, being a Marine Corps, that's the Navy unit. I was gonna be learning something new also. So if you're learning something new every day, you feel relevant. So being I wasn't a part of the Navy, mm -hmm. now I'm learning the Navy. Wow. Yes. 
Okay, well that's excellent. And I know the students uh, speak very highly of you. I had an opportunity to become, I, I was the principal for a day there. Yes, and I remember. it was about a year ago and it was exciting and they spoke very highly of you. And so thank you for making a difference in the lives of our children. Thank you. Uh, thank in you. Douglas County. Attorney Bernard, you're one of the top attorneys when it comes to government. They said you are, uh, this, he's, he's the man when it comes to being an attorney related to government. Tell me how your JAG <coughs> position position you to be so successful in this role for county government today. And also your private practice as well, if you want to. I, I, I would love to say I knew exactly what that is, and I appreciate the compliment, Madam Chair. Um, I think your life experiences, being well-rounded, being involved in a lot of things. I, I tell people the story all, all along. Uh, when I got in the Marine Corps in the fleet after the training I described earlier, I arrived and there were, I met Major Bansley, Walt Bansley, never forget the man from up north. And of course I had a southern accent so we hit it off immediately, you can imagine. <laughs> and uh, there were about 40 files sitting on the end of his desk and he said, there's your workload. That's all he said to me. So I grabbed my files and I was going down to Kwanzaa Hut trying to figure out where I was supposed to put my stuff down and I kept walking by. Offices had people in them and I got to the end there was a broom closet. And my choice was, as a first lieutenant then, I think, do I go back and ask him a question? And I said, heck no. <laughs> so I cleaned out the broom closet, and that's why I practiced law in the Marine Corps for my first probably six weeks. <laughs> but, uh, and, and, and that's a true story, but I think the Marine Corps gives you a, a, a sense of, you, we're not vulnerable. Whatever you, whatever you were afraid of, mm -hmm. when you go through Marine Corps training, and I think Sergeant Macon, Major can attest to this, you don't fear the world at all. And so I went from my various billets that I described, and I remember being on the runway at the beginning of Desert Storm, Desert Shield. Wow. Uh, I, I was packed, ready to go, because hey, that's what you do. When you're in the Marine Corps, if you're not, if you're not in the game, you're not in the game. Right. And so uh, I got out there and I remember lining up all the, the NCOs and all the privates who's married, who's not. I think I did 10,000 uh, wills on a runway. <laughs> and you talk about who's got kids, who's not, who's got a wife, who's got a mama, who's got a daddy, who's got a brother and sister. And right before I was about to leave to go uh, overseas, we had so many reservists called up. Wow. They were getting sued by mm -hmm. folks because they went from having businesses, being engaged in the real world, to now going to a military pay on, on orders uh, from the country. And I got called back to, to legal assistance to help them and really it started my civil practice. I, my exposure to civil practice had been sort of nominal, but in enforcing the Soldiers and Sailors Civil Relief Act at the time, I got to represent the dependents and the families that were left behind. And I really got to see what the cost of war is. I mean, war is, you know, it's blood, guts, it's lives, it's everything else, but it's the families that are left behind in quandary. So uh, I got to help them, and, and from that, I think I just had this attitude when I got out of the Marine Corps, uh, off active duty after the war, I came home and uh, I was in a big office in Atlanta, mm -hmm. looking out the glass and looking out the big city, and I said, this ain't me. I'm used to, I'm used to you know, working out of a, a broom closet. <laughs> and so uh, I decided to come back home and help my neighbors and help people west of Georgia and be a lawyer here. It's probably the best decision I've ever made in my life. Yes. But from a government perspective, I think, you know, I started in government in, in an innocuous way in the military. And one day when I uh, was trying a case, somebody from another governmental agency came by and was watching. And I was like, why are you here? We want a lawyer that actually knows how to try a case. Mm -hmm. And that got me involved in government representation, and I sort of, it's been part of our practice, although our focus is civil litigation with an emphasis on personal injury work and workers' comp wrongful death. Our litigation experience helps us in government because we understand how you get to court. And if you don't know how you get to court, you end up in court a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to say that that's probably uh, what we bring to the table. We've been blessed to be involved with this county a long time, mm -hmm. 26 years in practice now in this county, uh, and all 26 years in some capacity have been involved with some form of government out here or in West Georgia. Thank you so much, and also for taking care of 
the dependents. I was a dependent during that desert storm. We call it desert shield or yes, storm yeah. during that particular, yes, particular time. My uh, former husband was a Marine. And I believe if my memory serves me correctly, was it uh, late 80s, 90s? What, what, you remember what year? And I can Not tell you what we were stationed. Yeah. We were in, in California 90s. at the time. We yes. were in California. Yeah. I, I think it's probably a transition between 91 and 92. There was some activity in 91. The real buildup was 91, 92. Yep, so. that's, we were in California. I was in Cap was, Pendleton also. Yes. Yeah. We, we were the same place. Yeah. Well, we Small were at world. El Toro, California. Mm -hmm. And I served 19 of his 20 years, so I feel like I'm a Marine as well. So I've served so that's thank why I served. Now, where are we service. stationed? So thank you for taking care of the dependents. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Sergeant Major Lepley, you uh, have almost spent three decades in serving the military. And then when you transitioned, you didn't stop. You are a, a big name at the American Legion, Post 145 here in Douglas County. Tell us a little bit about the, the service, and I know you served as the adjutant and other roles at the American Legion. Can you tell us a little bit about the role of the American Legion and why you feel that it's important that we support as veterans? Well, the, many reasons. Um, but primarily because we're, we remain active in our community and we have special emphasis on the children and youth programs. Mm -hmm. There are a multitude of programs that we have. We have shooting sports, we have baseball, obviously boy state, girl state, oratorical. They can get scholarships mm -hmm. from these programs and it I like being involved with the children. And, and then, just like I did in the military, someone will come to me and I'll get a call, as I did when I was an officer at the post. And, you know, my husband is in such and such hospital and I can't get him into the VA because I, I, he had never filled out his paperwork mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. And Jim Fredericks, Mm -hmm. also who lives here in Douglas County, worked for Mr. Commissioner Wheeler. He was his second and also a member of Post 145. And I was able to call Jim up and I got a copy of the 214 and I never really looked at it. But within 72 hours, that person had, well, obviously that night they got moved into a VA, a VA hospital because the, our state has its own. and. Within 72 hours, he had a VA rating of 100% and he died like a day later. Oh, wow. But that covered his family. It's being able to assist people in need. And you don't necessarily have to be a veteran. You don't have to be a veteran. You could be someone in the community. I'm also very active with my church. I'm very proud mm -hmm. of my church mm -hmm. and the activities they do. And, and reaching out, we, we visit various nursing homes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and all those things are important because some of the individuals in, in the homes mm -hmm. have no one. And so if we didn't go visit them, and all they want is somebody to talk to them or listen to them, you don't have to do anything major. You don't have to jump through hoops. Just let them know that you're there and sit and talk to them and actually be kind of surprised some of the stuff you'd learn. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bar uh, Barnett, you were elected National Commander of the United States' largest veterans organization just a couple of years ago. I think about maybe a year, two years 2015, ago. 2015-16. Yeah, 2000. I remember when you were running. And uh, congratulations again. And you served 2.2 million people in the United States. What was that experience like? Can you tell me a little bit about that experience? What an incredible experience <laughs> to, to lead such a dedicated group that uh, wow. all these veterans Mm -hmm. And the veterans are people who serve their nation, and they're still serving. And uh, I was elected, and I had the opportunity to travel all 50 states, 12 foreign countries, met, uh, uh, testified before Congress on veterans' issues. I fought accountability issues on the VA health care system. Yes. We fight it because we're fighting for veterans, as Mary was talking about. It wasn't about me, but I was, I was the spokesman for that many people and it's what an honor it was mm -hmm. uh, to travel the world uh, to talk about what we do and how we change our communities and how we make our communities better how we make our nation better and how we can still be active so uh, it, it was just an incredible experience and I'm still very much involved 
uh, with with uh, th those programs, even though I'm a past, uh, we're never past as veterans. We're always looking towards the future and having a vision uh, of, of how to make our communities better. And, uh, and uh, thank you for asking that question. <laughs> yes, you're, and we're neighbors. And I remember when you were running, it was so exciting. And I mean, I was just elated when you won. I said, wow, and all the, uh, I'm a member of also Post 145 American Legions. And when I received my magazine and saw your face on the front of the cover, I said, oh, I know him. So thank you so much for your service. Well, thank you. And I had chairman. an opportunity to see you a few times uh, testify in front of Congress. I, I saw you said, uh, job well done. Sergeant Major Jordan, yes, uh, tell me if you had just uh, some advice to give to our youth today that may want to go into the Marine Corps, yeah. just join the service, uh, any branch. Tell me what, what advice you would give them and why you think it's a good thing to do. Not everybody's cut out for the military. Because you have the idea that you want to go doesn't mean that you can. So if the idea is in your mind that the military is something that you want to pursue, my advice to them would be to start now. Whatever <coughs> capacity, whatever grade that you got the idea, military is the way I want to go. You have to start now. And the way that is, as soon as you get up in the morning, make your bed. If you want to be successful in life, <laughs> I can't care. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a quote from somebody. I can't remember who exactly said it. He said, make your bed. And in the military, that's what we had to do. The 45s, you had to bounce a quarter off. It had to be tight. So start making your bed. Next, do things around the house that have your mom, dad, grandma, anybody surprised. Is that my child? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Just all the things that you would have, you get the culture shock in boot camp. Start doing it now. I have a, a female cadet whose her plan is to go to the military. And she came to me and said, so Major, can you start treating me like they would in boot camp? And I said, are you sure? Mm -hmm. Are you positive? <laughs> I say after two weeks of that, she didn't want it. She didn't want it. Because the idea, the glory behind it is, is, is wonderful. But they don't realize it's work that you have to put up. You have to do first mm -hmm. to get to the prize. You know, nothing in life is worth it if you don't have the sweat, the tears, maybe a little bit of blood, nothing, I don't want to scare anybody, but you have to work for it. It means more to you. And then come over to Chapel Hill and <coughs> come talk to me and I'll help you any way I can. <laughs> Hard work definitely pays off. Yes, ma'am, definitely. I, so thank you for giving our young folks advice, particularly those ones who are interested in, in the military because nothing comes easy, even today, <laughs> with me serving when I the first thing I do in the morning you know after I say my prayers I make my bed yeah. up I just it's just a habit yes I want to try I was trying to see if I could rub off on my daughter but she is not doing a great job she is a teacher at Douglas County High School and she, I shouldn't say this she'd not like me but I want her to make that bed up when she first gets up. so I'll leave that alone but I will move on to uh, you uh, attorney Bernard got a question for you uh, you were born here I'm not born here you were you went to school here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Lithia Springs High School, so uh, you're truly locally grown, and you, um, you, UGA graduate, and you're still de dedicated to serving the community. Tell, uh, tell me what makes you motivate about de dedicating, no, tell me what motivates you and what keeps you dedicated to serving Douglas County. Oof. And Can I get a sergeant I major? Played, <laughs> I believe you played baseball too. Did you play baseball at one I, point I, in your I life? Played, in, in, in my, at uh, Lithia Springs High School, I played everything. Uh -huh. Probably played too much. <laughs> um, my son still plays baseball. He's a junior at Harvard, so yes. he, he, uh, we're very proud of him. And my triplet girls are in high school still. But um, you know, as I felt like whenever I left here. Uh, and spent time both in Athens and then in the Marine Corps all over both uh, both east and west coast. Uh, there's something about coming home and bringing something back to your community. Uh, I, I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I think that you sort of learn both in life as you mature, and a lot of us need a lot of maturing, not just because we're misfits, but we really don't know what life's about till you get out there and, and see it firsthand. But from a military standpoint, what you learn is that we're all we're all in it together. Right. It doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> I think the lieutenant commander said earlier, it's we're all in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the community is comprised of everything and everybody. We're only as good as our least brethren, 
and we're only as best as our best brother, and you got to go in there and, and, and dig your sleeves up and, and work a little bit. Uh, I think my first experience was I got a phone call when I got out of Marine Corps, and I, my first experience was the Marine Corps Association of Georgia Lawyers, which is a group of Marines, all who, most who are lawyer, well, all who are lawyers now or have been during their career, but many did, were not lawyers in the Marine Corps. Some were, some, some weren't. And I remember talking to Colonel George Bailey, and he tried to, you know, they, they wheel you in. They get you early. You're getting out, so they get you. They want you involved. Next thing I know, three years later, I was leading the, uh, the, the uh, Marine Corps Association of Georgia Lawyers, which is a statewide organization. Wow. And here I am dealing with, you know, salty people, and I'm, I look like a baby. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I get, I, when it comes to community, I, I say this. I think the problem is there's a lot of talk out there, mm -hmm. but there, there's not as much action. Right. And I think in the military, you don't talk. You, you listen a lot <laughs> and you walk the walk, so to speak. Yes. So when I came home, I sort of wanted, I, I think life, and I said this one time before, we spend too much time trying to build a resume, right? Mm -hmm. We want to be accepted. We want everybody to think, oh, we did this, he did that. But when you look at your life, have you really done that much? And so I think that life is, life is a resume. And instead of working on building it, go out and build a life Go out to your community and participate in your community, and it will naturally bless you on its own. You don't have to do much. Right. Uh, and I think, you know, from my experience has been uh, just trying to, to walk the walk as opposed to doing a lot of talking. Thank you. That's a great response. Sergeant Major Lepley, the, the old uh, cliche, the apple does not fall far from the tree. You gave birth to someone who's in the Army now, your beautiful daughter. And without going into a lot of detail, because I don't know her role in the Army, can you just tell us a little bit about your experience now? Uh, you served 26 years. Now you see uh, your offspring now serving in the military. I guess it'd be much like my father must have thought. Yeah. <laughs> because he served 20 plus years. Uh, I'm very proud of her. She just recently made first sergeant. Oh, um, right. So she's. She calls me sometimes, she's frustrated because she's not in a traditional unit. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was blessed, I had some traditional t &E units. She doesn't have that right now and there's a whole new set of problems that come with it. Uh, she's deployed eight times. Wow. I have an eight-year-old grandson from her and uh, He's lived with me <laughs> as much as he's lived with her. The first he's time I got buddy. it, he was six <laughs> months old. And she got him back, he was, oh, almost two. Mm -hmm. And we kind of laugh because she'll have young soldiers come to her and say, well, well, first, Sergeant, you know, when, when you had your son and they did, she goes, I wasn't there. <laughs> I wasn't there. I was in the sandbox. <laughs> and so uh, I've been blessed being able to have him in my life, too. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, uh, your daughter's wonderful. I had an opportunity to meet her and your grandson. Is, he's a character. He, he's a character. He's <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Barnett, you have had a long, distinguished career in the military. What are some of your fondest memories in the U.S. Army, Army and after to help inspire you to be successful, or others' lives to help them be successful. So you've had a long career. I'll just restate that. You've had a long career. What are your fondest memories? And what can you do to help others be inspired by your life story? And well, I'm hoping you know, you're writing was, a book uh, somewhere. Are you writing a book about your life? Oh, I, I could, <laughs> and, okay. and, and I could have some unique chapters. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, as in the military, and when I was, uh, getting ready to retire, I, I wanted to go back to something I wanted to do when I was in high school. Oh, wow. Okay. I wanted to be a teacher and a coach. That's fantastic. And I had the opportunity, veterans help veterans, and especially when it comes to hiring veterans, uh, because they, they have unique skill sets. And uh, it just so happened in one of the local school districts that the, the hiring uh, uh, director of human uh, resources was a retired colonel himself. Wow. And now he's a member of my post. <laughs> uh, but uh, he came in and he, he got me a job interview. And I went down to a, a school and the principal just happened to be a Vietnam veteran. 
And he looked me straight in the eye and he says, why should I hire you? And I looked him straight in the eye and I said, sir, I think any person in their life should be able to go from West Point to East Point. He understood because I understood the challenges of teaching in a school system in an area where you have at-risk young people. And what an experience it was to, to teach and to coach and to have those kids be successful at an at-risk school. And uh, I, I look with such fond memories. And just last week, I was getting my car serviced and I was in one of the local dealerships. And there was a young lady and I knew I knew her. Mm -hmm. And she sure knew me. And, and she says, hi coach. And, <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, what are you doing now? And she says, I'm a sergeant a deputy sergeant with the Fulton County Sheriff's Department. All right. And just the pride of having one of your students be that successful means so much to me. And, and what a fulfilling thing to be. It's not to pay, because you're not going to be a teacher <laughs> or a coach because of pay. It's, right, right. But you do it because you think that you can help those young people. And I know uh, I've worked with the, the sergeant major on, on several occasions about helping youth and and that's what it's about it's what it's about certainly not the pay but the passion that's, that's right. very important that's right. um, I'm certainly as we wrap up I just had final closing uh, remarks and then just had one question uh, one more question for each of you just wanted to first of all say thank you for your service and your time and the uh, amazing impact that you've had on the lives of others and the difference that you've made and then this um, mantle that you continue to carry forth. Uh, the Marine Corps bar Ball is coming up real soon and the Army certainly celebrates as we go forward. I just love and enjoy eating all the different cakes and, and <laughs> being in various rooms. But I just would like to say thank you for everything that you all do every day and it makes a difference. Uh, my daughter said, I don't know who's a Marine, you're my dad because I, I believe you, when you've been in that environment you have this regiment of discipline and that's important and uh, it really uh, commands the room and you all all are commanding presence of this room. I noticed when I met each of you all separately, I, I noticed that, your personalities, but uh, I appreciate what you're doing. My final remarks and my final question for you, what's next? What's next, Sergeant Major, for you? What's uh, next? Yeah, in terms of your career, are you, you, the, are you wrapping the, it up? You the see sky you is the limit. <laughs> uh, I mean, as long as my body keeps moving, I'm gonna keep moving. Um, I just love, you know, getting up knowing that out of all the kids in, in the school, I'm, I'll be able to touch at least one. Right. As long as I I'm keep making a difference, I want to keep going on. But if I do wrap it up, I just don't want to go see the world uh, from a different side. <laughs> from a different perspective, to see the world again. <laughs> you want to see the world without being a deployed. There you go. <laughs> yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Okay, Attorney Bernard, what's next for you? Uh, I know you have triplets, love it. No wow. more kids. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love it. I, I mean, you're the first person I've met other than my great-great-grandmother that had triplets, so it's exciting when I say triplets. I'm going to tell you, they're, they're, I think that my triplet girls are a, a bigger challenge than the Marine Corps ever was for me. Our, <laughs> our son was easy. The girls are a different story. Now they're teenagers. Uh, I, I, we're going to keep doing what we do. And I, this next year will be, I'm coming up on 30 years of being a lawyer. Very proud of that. Blessed mm -hmm. because a lot of people played a role in getting me there. Yes. Um, but I would say this to your audience more so than what's in it for me, what's in it for us. Yes. And I'd like the audience to remember veterans and active duty personnel, reservists, their families. You know, uh, it's, it, the, the saying has been coined many times, freedom meant and free. That's right. I'd like to thank all these audience members, but also I think it's more about what we represent. Yes. All branches of service, all branches of people. Mm -hmm. We get to say a lot of things about a lot of things. We can watch whatever channel on TV we want to watch. We can go to the store. Mm -hmm. We can go, go uh, you know, travel the world. And the reason why we can do that is because we're Americans. Yes. And I have never been any place in the world, no matter what they say about us, that they didn't respect the United States of America That's right. and the United States of America's military force. And so I think it's important to keep those people front and center. And I just had a dad that passed away in June. He was in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
and this country was very good to him. Amen. That's right. And, and I will tell you, at the end, mm -hmm. the VA was there for him, and I'm very thankful. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, that segues into you, uh, Attorney Bernard is making me think about my dad, uh, mm -hmm. who's buried in the veterans, um, um, it's the Ver Veterans Cemetery in Memphis, Tennessee. And I mean, when you go out there, I call it dress, right dress. Everything is just impeccable. And uh, it's easy to find him, and I stand there and chat with him because I knew he was a paratrooper in the uh, Korean War, and 985 troops jumped in in 1951, mm. and only, only out of his battalion, only 85 returned, and he was one of them. So he has stories out of stories to tell me about jumping into, I believe it was uh, South Korea, I believe that's where they jumped in, but he talked about his amazing experience so I can understand what you're talking about Attorney Bernard I, I miss my dad I was a daddy's girl so I'm I, sorry for breaking you up no, on that, no I'm breaking with you so that's what I said that's okay I understand he I, lived a good life I can promise you he was the only person that uh, he played a lot of golf when he got out yes and even when his health got bad he was the only person ever at a country club down in Louisiana he was originally from Louisiana mm -hmm. they let him drive his golf cart on the green to putt mm -hmm. because they respect him so much. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important, you know, I think the Sergeant Major hit the nail on the head. I don't care if you serve or don't serve, but support the troops. That's right. Support the troops. Support the troops. What's next for you, Sergeant Major? I'm Please. just going to be glad I get up on the green side of the grass every day <laughs> and keep doing what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. If there's some volunteer work that needs to be done, and someone reaches out and I can fit it into the schedule, I'm good, I'll be there. Okay, finally, and last but not least, um, Lieutenant Colonel Burnett, tell us what's next. Tell me what's next for you. Well, you know, we've mentioned it a little bit here about the sacrifices of families. And I guarantee you, while I was out doing things with the American Legion, teaching, coaching, military, the family really they pay the sacrifice too. And I, I want to spend more family time and I've been trying to do that and uh, continuing my youth activities. Yes. Uh, this uh, last year was my first year as the senior volunteer at our Boys Nation program at our nation's capital where we bring in a hundred of the finest uh, young men across the country and, and I have the distinct honor and privilege of uh, kind of uh, directing that program. And uh, that, that is so, so much fulfillment for me to be able to continue doing that sort of teaching, uh, mentoring uh, that I did and, and, and still have time. And, and every once in a while, maybe go play golf. But I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have to drive on the greens yet, <laughs> but, but I'm getting there. But uh, it, it just, uh, it, it's great to financially being retired military, yes. being a retired teacher. Uh, Social Security, that, that I can do those <laughs> things. All the great things, yes. I can do those things without pay and not put a burden on my family. So Absolutely. what a great opportunity. And only a country like America yes. can provide those types of opportunities to every American. The sky's the limit. And that's what I would tell the people. This country is a land of opportunity. And I, t I would tell my students that and I tell my kids that, uh, you know, there are just so many opportunities. You just got to reach out and make sure that you take advantage of them and, and try to find the one that best fulfills what's in your heart and your desires to make you a better person, to make your community a better place, to make the nation a better place. That's right. Oh, thank you so much. It has certainly been uh, my privilege and honor to sit here among great men and women who served our country, who are veterans, uh, I am so appreciative of all the wealth of knowledge and experience that sit before me. Uh, I'm humbled. Thank you so much again for coming out and uh, happy Veterans Day. Uh, coming Thank soon. You. Happy Veterans Day. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Too. Thank you. It has been an honor to have all four of my special guests with me today. Thank you all for joining and I'll see you next time.